1984, the Denver Broncos were a team together as they marched to their third AFC Western Division title. With a roster that included 21 first- or second-year players, the Broncos celebrated their 25th anniversary season in professional football under the guidance of new owner Patrick D. Bowling, with leadership provided by Coach of the Year Dan Reeves. This very special team of talented veterans and up-and-coming stars had all the right stuff on way to their fifth playoff appearance. <laughs> Under a bright blue Rocky Mountain sky, a very sure and mature John Elway led the Broncos' offensive attack against AFC rival Pittsburgh. On this day of big plays, wide receiver Steve Watson ran up 177 yards receiving. Elway connected for two touchdowns to Watson and H-back Jim Wright. for the Broncos' success in 1984 was built around an opportunistic, bend-but-don't-break defensive unit. Against the Steelers, youngsters Ricky Hundley and Roger Jackson worked the special teams, while the rest of the ball-hawking Broncos were in constant pursuit to make the big play. season, Denver had lived by the turnover. Now, with time running out in the game, Denver owner Pat Bowen watched his Broncos suffer the biggest turnover of all. Elway takes it back to the 15-yard line. Pass is intercepted at the 30-yard line. Picked off by Eric Williams, and he's still running. Broncos' call to glory had come to an abrupt end. But what had sustained the Broncos through this championship season was the togetherness they had attained as a young, tough, and talented team. And it was this togetherness that brought the Broncos the winning of the West. The story of how the West was won began with a solid front office. President Pat Bolin teamed with executive John Beek and coach Dan Reeves to construct a solid foundation on which the Broncos were built. In a season in which the Broncos tied or broke 13 team records, the defense was the most celebrated unit. The Bronco defense finished second only to San Francisco in touchdowns allowed and forced 55 turnovers. And from the very first week of the regular season, the defense served notice that when you ventured into Denver territory, you were in danger of losing not only the ball, but the game. Against Cincinnati, linebacker Carl Mecklenburg was one of the Broncos' leading hitmen. While the defense outmuscled the Bengals, the Broncos' offense shifted into high gear. Behind the veteran offensive line of Billy Bryan, Paul Howard, Keith Bishop, Dave Studdard, and Ken Lanier, the Broncos' young running backs were led by number 23, Sammy Winder. And when the line wasn't opening up the running lanes, they were providing Elway with time to find open airways. Butch Johnson moonwalked his way to 56 yards receiving. And when Elway suffered a bruised shoulder, backup Gary Kubiak came in and found rookie tight end Clarence Kay for the winning score. Kay's eight-yard grab capped off the 20-17 opening day win. After being shut out in Chicago, the Broncos regrouped for a special Sunday night game with the Browns. Winder ran up 76 yards on the ground and hauled in 56 more behind the wall of Howard, Bryan, and Bishop. After the
the Browns put 14 points on the board, the Broncos' offense answered with 17 of their own. Elway hit Butch Johnson and second-year man Clint Sampson for two second-quarter scores. field goal gave the Broncos a lead they never relinquished. But the real damage was done by the defense as they registered a season-high seven sacks and pulled down three interceptions. Dennis Smith and Steve Wilson, number 45, each stole one. But the biggest theft of all came with only seconds to play. 50 seconds left. McDonald at his 45, throwing. It's intercepted. 40, 45, 50. Robbins at the 40. He'll return it for a touchdown. Rookie Randy Robbins' 62-yard interception gave Denver a 24-14 victory and sent the Broncos home, where this football-crazy city's love affair with its most enduring symbol of civic pride was again in full bloom. When special teams coach Fran Polesfoot became ill, the fans responded with an outpouring of affection. And in week four's contest with Kansas City, Polesfoot's former group set the tone for the contest. Special teamers John Sawyer, Tony Lilly, Aaron Smith, Don Summers, Roger Jackson, Chris Brewer, and Mike Freeman were led by MVP wheel horse Ken Woodard, number 52. Rookie putter Chris Norman made a fine first year impression with a 62 yard punt. 83-yard blast that was the longest in Bronco history. With Norman's record-setting punts keeping Kansas City backed up, the Bronco offense put the Chiefs away. The offensive line opened big holes for Gerald Wilhite, number 47, Sammy Winder, and Rick Paris, whose combined efforts averaged nearly six yards per rush. Paul Howard executing the perfect trap. The Bronco back slipped through for two touchdowns. The Denver defense established a new Bronco record by allowing the Chiefs only 50 yards rushing. Cornerback Mike Harden's 45-yard interception capped off the Bronco shutout of the Chiefs. match up with the L.A. Raiders, the defense again made the big plays that led the Broncos to victory. Assistant head coach Joe Cotter devised a defensive game plan that shut down the Raiders. Premier outside linebacker Tom Jackson was the leader of this high-powered unit that pounded the defending Super Bowl champions and left them gasping for lungfuls of the thin Colorado air. Tough 16 to 13 victory established Reeves as unique among NFL coaches. He has never lost to a defending Super Bowl champ in his four years as a head coach. Reeves' successful game plan was again in focus against the Lions, where the Broncos combined a high-flying offensive attack with an unrelenting defense. The Broncos won their fourth straight behind the scoring combination of Elway to Watson. Watson hauled in 111 of Elway's 210 passing yards. While on the ground, the march continued with the Broncos' parade of tailbacks. Sammy Winder flew in for six of the Broncos' 28 points. While cornerback Louie Wright set the tone of the defense by forcing a first-quarter fumble. Dennis Smith, Steve Wilson, Tony Lilly, Darren Como, Barney Chavis, Steve Busick, number 58, Ken Woodard, number 52, performed the perfect tricks that made the Lions all but disappear. For the day, the defense intercepted seven passes and scored twice. This avalanche of turnovers created by the defense continued in a Monday night contest the following week. On a night that wasn't fit for man or beast, the Broncos beat back the elements and beat up the Packers. After the Broncos won the toss, Coach Reeves elected to kick off. 
forcing Green Bay to handle the ball first in snow-swept Mile High Stadium. Packers will start moving from right to left, from south to north. Packers handing the ball off, a loss, and it picked up on the bounce on the fumble. It will be a touchdown for the Broncos on the first play. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. That's my first touchdown. Way to pick it up. Way to pick it up. Way to get the ball off me. It's time to hand off is to Clark, and he drives to the right side across the 25, out near the 28, another fumble. This one's picked up on the far side and returned by Louis Wright. Louis Wright's touchdown made the score 14 to nothing with 14 minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, and the Packers never recovered. Heavy Steeler double zone. opportunistic defense. Tom Jackson was named by his teammates as the Broncos' most inspirational player for the fourth consecutive year. Roland Jones' sack forced a record-setting seventh fumble that sealed the Broncos' 17-14 victory. Reeves said the team was winning ugly, but the Broncos were 6-1 and, and off to their most beautiful start ever. Yeah! responded by cutting off the Bills with six sacks and four interceptions. Darren Como's theft and linebacker Jim Ryan's sack helped lay the Bills to rest. Elway led the Broncos' offensive attack with two first-half touchdowns. second half, insurance was provided by Gary Kubiak. Kubiak finished off the Bills as the Broncos enjoyed their most dominant win of 1984, 37-7. success continued for the Broncos in Los Angeles, where Kubiak was again at the helm. Against the Raiders and their 91,000 stunned fans, the Broncos had all the right moves as they rallied from a 19-6 deficit with 13 fourth quarter points. Watson's 12-yard touchdown with 24 seconds remaining sent the game into overtime. Denver's defense once again played a vital role when Mike Harden stripped the ball loose and Steve Foley recovered. But the biggest damage was done by safety Roger Jackson, who picked off the Broncos' third interception of the day and set up one of the most dramatic victories in Bronco history. Five seconds left in sudden death. The snap, Carlos's kick is on the way. Gone. Rich Carlos' 35-yard field goal not only put an end to the game, but it moved the Broncos from a novelty item to top shelf in the AFC West. A healthy John Elway returned as the 8-1 Broncos played host to the Patriots. Mark Cooper and Winford Hood worked well with Brian, Howard, Studdard, and the rest of the talented offensive line to provide Elway with time to pass for 315 yards. fourth 
quarter flip to Butch Johnson brought the Broncos back from a seven-point deficit to tie the game at 19. Watson and Johnson combined for 290 receiving yards and three touchdowns. But with two minutes remaining in the game, it was time for more defensive heroics. touchdown sealed the Broncos 11th straight mile high victory establishing a new franchise record after posting their third last minute victory in three weeks 16 to 13 in San Diego the Broncos returned home where linebacker Rick Dennison helped strip the Vikings chances of victory enjoying his finest day as a pro Elway threw five touchdown passes to lead the Broncos to a 42 to 21 victory Watson and Johnson, along with rookie Ray Alexander, were the beneficiaries of Elway's 80% passing performance. <laughs> Celebrating their 15th consecutive sellout season, Denver's dedicated fans were primed for Week 13's matchup with AFC rival Seattle. The win would give the Broncos a comfortable two-game lead in the division loss would tie the clubs for first place. The Broncos and Seahawks both came to stage a shootout. After a quick score silenced the best in the West, the Broncos were left to pound away at a Seahawk lead with the loser going down with guns blazing. In a game that was crammed with phases and stages of suspense, the players and the crowd of nearly 75,000 lived it one play at a time. second touchdown brought the Broncos to within three points. But with only 39 seconds left in the contest, it was up to the bare right foot of Rich Carlos to send the game into overtime. Ball is down. Carlos's kick is on the way. It's the goal post and comes back. It is no good. Seattle's 27-24 victory combined with a loss at Kansas City the following week forced the Broncos to win their final two games to clinch the division. This is Bob Martin with Larry Zimmer and the battle for the AFC West Championship. After beating San Diego in their final home game, this much-anticipated rematch at Seattle had the Broncos and the Seahawks tied for first place. In the noisiest stadium in the league, the Broncos swept like surf to the shore and quickly silenced the crowd and pulled under the Seahawks. and Reuben Carter, along with youngsters Walt Boyer, Andre Townsend, and Scott Garnett, made the Seahawks their 11th victim to rush for under 100 yards. This wave of success continued with two interceptions that drowned any chance of a Seahawk victory. Here comes 
the blitz from Robbins. There's the pass, and it's picked off by Foley. Steve Foley will return it for the touchdown. Sammy Winder ran up the second-best single-season rushing total in Bronco history and earned a trip to the Pro Bowl. John Elway scrambled for 43 of his season-high 237 yards and passed for one score. Elway finished the season with nearly 2,600 yards passing and 18 touchdowns, while the Broncos finished off the Seahawks with Rick Paris' fourth-quarter plunge. The Broncos' victory over the Seahawks was the crowning achievement of an unprecedented season. Their success in 1984 was based on their togetherness. With a cast of solid starters and dependable reserves like Bryson Manor, Glenn Hyde, Marshawn Graves, and Jesse Miles, the Broncos played to the strengths of one another. Their triumphs belonged to an offense that wasn't an illustrious group, but a solid one. And a defense that gave, but also took in a big way. What the Broncos lacked in size, they made up for in heart. And it was with heart that the Denver Broncos became the winners of the West.